Hello and welcome back. Today in this video we're going to go through a deep dive on the Sleep Guided Journal by Pulse of Potentials. If you are new here I've already done the Growth Guided Journal and I'll link it down below or somewhere here but there are some overlaps i.e the history of the brand so I'm going to like skim through those in this video but if you want to see a bit more detail you'll see it in that video. So with that away, let's continue. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the history of the brand very, very briefly, why I bought mine, the sleep, the journey, are they even impactful, and also the review and who are they aimed for. So to give you a summary, Positive Potential is a relatively new brand. It was created actually back in 2023. It was a woman who founded it and based in Finland. They have a large following on Instagram, just under 20,000 at this point of recording, August, 2024, and their aim is is to help individuals to explore, reflect and grow in different aspects of their life. They focus on people's well-being and making mental health affordable and I think that is so so important. I've done a deep dive on this, I highly recommend you checking that video out. So going into why I bought mine, I bought this exactly the same time as I bought the growth. I needed both of them. I was going through a relatively rough patch in my life straight after the wedding. There were certain things that was done that really shouldn't have been done and it's a bit sad when someone doesn't really have your best interest at heart on your wedding day however it got to the point where it was affecting my sleep and also my mental health since this but also my sleep which is why i ended up purchasing this as well and the reason i bought this book was because it was based around cognitive behavior therapy for insomnia. Now, I don't have insomnia, but I do have trouble sleeping, i.e. I spend a lot of my time in my own thoughts. And especially when stuff has happened, there's events that, I would say maybe negative events that's happened. It plays in my mind a lot. And unfortunately, it just, it stops me from sleeping. I end up obsessing about it. And sometimes it brings a lot of feelings. It brings a lot of emotions that I would say are relatively negative, which impacts my sleep. I could take up to two, three, four hours to fall asleep at night. That is my average trying to go to bed. And it's been four months and I'm still relatively the same. I have improved a little bit and that's absolutely knacking myself out, which at that point, I would say maybe half an hour. But if I ever go to sleep awake, it's no chance, no chance, it's even worse. They also state that they address the root cause of sleep problems, which would be very, very helpful for me. It's created by psychologists. It also includes a two week intensive program, which I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know what that was all about, but I'm gonna tell you now. It is identify and modify the behavioral and cognitive factor affecting your sleep. You'll also implement and sustain effective sleep habits and routines, track your progress, and understand the nuance of your own sleep patterns. I'm gonna tell you straight up that I don't have a sleep pattern. It's very, very messy. So that was my starting point. I bought this book for £28. It is hardcover. The pages are actually really, really nice. As opposed to the Grove, I actually spent £22 on the Grove. It is soft cover. The thing Things that are different between the two, uh, as in the actual feel of the book. If you're someone who cares about the quality, i.e. the pages, the thickness of the pages, the book cover, I'll go for the hardback. But if you're someone who's not that bothered, the softback is perfectly fine. I will say the pages and the softback is ever so slightly thinner than the hardback. So just bear that in mind. I do enjoy the hardback a little bit more just because it feels a bit more sturdy and it feels a bit more, I don't say luxurious, but substantial currently all the hardbacks are going for 28 pounds it is originally 33 pounds which i'm gonna be honest 28 pounds i think is relatively okay it's slightly on the higher side in the previous video i said 22 pounds for a softback is actually really really good especially if you just want to get access to the information i think it's a very very good choice but i think the sleep journal isn't offered in softback at least from what i remember so Take that as you will. So very similar to the growth, the sleep also comes in different stages. In here, they call it the journey. So the journey is split into five different stages. Stage number one is foundation, defining the starting point of your sleep journey. Stage two is sleep hygiene, focusing on your environment, habits, and routines. Stage three is belief, exploring your belief and attitude about sleep. This one, I didn't think much of it, but it is quite important. Stage four is daily sleep logs. This is the two weeks intensive tracking of your sleeps and habits. And then the final stage is focusing on how you can continue your sleep journey. So in each stages, we're gonna just explore roughly what they're gonna be talking about because this book is slightly more worded than the growth. The growth was just more about questions for you to reflect about yourself, your surroundings, your resilience, you as a person, your relationship. Whereas the sleep is a much more informational base. Yes, there are 
are questions as you can see but you can see that there is a lot of worded situations that i would say warrants a bit more explanation so in stage one foundation they're actually looking for your negative thoughts patterns the behaviors that would disrupt your sleep and replacing them with healthier habits this was a little bit more comforting to me mainly because mine is mainly based on negative thoughts a lot of negative event let's put it away that way i will definitely say that it's something that i had a habit since i was young because i do remember it sounds terrible but you know crying yourself to sleep as a kid like but that kind of stuff started young so naturally even as an adult it does creep in every now and then but it was nice to see that i might be on the right track they also look at cbti which is the insomnia part of it and works by untangling cognitive and behavior not and offering practical tools and strategies to address both aspects they aim to address the root of the cause of insomnia instead of managing the symptoms which i think is so so helpful you know when you have any issues you always want to find the root and not just try and cover it by fixing the symptoms. They also recommend to complete the chapters in order. So essentially the order that they recommend is pay attention to your sleep environment, build out daytime habits and evening routine, change your limiting belief and start the two weeks intensive logs. And finally, there is a self-reflection on just in terms of where your starting point is. Some of the self-assessments are measured in a scale of one to five. And some of the examples that you can get is I feel rested and energized during the day. I regularly get around eight hours of sleep every night. I often feel anxious or worried about sleep. Those are roughly the type of question that you will get. And then they also ask you about your sleep goals, what changes in your sleep you would like to see at the end of this journal. And for me mainly it's just to reduce the amount of negative thoughts. I don't think it's possible so quickly to remove every single negative thoughts, especially when there is actually a legitimate reason <laughs> um, that I could think of that has happened that genuinely just kind of you know occupies my mind a little bit at least for now that brings on to section number two which is sleep hygiene on this section we are focusing on your environment your habits and your routine which i want to say i already know tiktok comes to mind i watch tiktoks before bed it's the only thing that gets me into bed so in this section we are looking at creating a comfortable sleep environment dark quiet and cool bedroom engaging in relaxing activities before bedtime reading meditating or a warm bath i not tiktok establishing a consistent sleep schedule helps regulate your internal body clock as well the internal body clock is something that i've already known about because my mom has always told me about it but to be completely honest i just haven't put that much thought in it i think this part will be very very helpful because i have noticed my sleeping patterns has gone later and later and later during the night and a lot of the time it's because i don't want to sleep i want to stay awake until i am that extra tired so i don't have time to think and then i could just go to bed a little bit quicker that's the main situation for me other things that they also will explore is the option to pick and decide on those activities so in the book they actually do lay out certain things i .e. are you going to take a warm bath and if you do decide to do it you can give it a nice little tick just to show that that is what you are going to do that is going to be a routine that you are going to be implementing which i thought was a really really nice gesture because there's something about writing things down that does solidify your thoughts your feelings and your actions as well Stage three is belief. And in that part, it explores your attitude towards sleep. For me, I don't really have that much of an attitude towards sleep. I just find it either a bit boring because it's more like a necessity for me. So it's not something for me to relish myself in. I just didn't realize that you can have a relationship with sleep. You also explore the thoughts and emotion that can influence your sleep quality. That one I can absolutely support. If you're someone who thinks a lot, who spend a lot of time in your thoughts that are particularly negative, it really can affect your sleep. It could bring up emotions that would not help you sleep. And when you feel that, it's even harder to go to bed because you're you're anything but peaceful at this point. Section three also consists of a progress tracker where you can answer 21 different questions, which I thought was very, very handy. I got two that resonated to me. The first one was what usually runs through your mind as you try and fall asleep. Um, how do those thoughts impact your ability to sleep? Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, I have bought both of these books two months after my wedding and a lot of my negative thoughts are unfortunately from not 
necessarily from the wedding itself it's just from the whole wedding period and it's not necessarily from everyone all it takes is just that one person that really impacted my ability to sleep because i end up stewing in my own thoughts replaying the moment the second question for me was do you ever postpone going to sleep to do something else why do you choose to do these activities over sleep my most basic answer would be the fact that it's just a bit more interesting sleeping for me isn't necessarily fun it's not really something that I look forward to. If I could choose not to sleep, I absolutely would. And then tie that with negative thoughts, a time where I normally reflect, it just makes it very unattractive for me. It's a place where I rather not go unless I do not have the energy. That's the time I'll go to bed. But it's one of the main reasons why I bought this because I want to start building healthy habits. I shouldn't let anyone affect me this much. As I keep telling myself, it's a reflection of them and their character and not me. So the last thing I want to do is give that person power over me, which they don't. Section four is the sleep log. And this is where the two weeks intensive tracking starts. So in there, you'll see two logs. One is for the morning and the other one's for the evening. The evening logs consist of evening routines, untangling your thoughts, which is something I found very, very helpful. And then list things that you are grateful for. The morning logs consist of more like a summary of what has happened. I think that's the way I would see it. It's more like what time did you go to bed? What time you woke up? How many hours of sleep did you have? How many hours did you stay awake on a scale one to five different aspects of your sleep yesterday daytime activity what does it include does it include alcohol exercise healthy meals digital device stresses worries anxiety it's more like a question of things that you just tick as you go along and the last part is ways to improve tonight's sleep so those are really helpful when it comes to finding your triggers for me what i found out was i was watching bob's burgers and there was an episode where it just really triggered me i think it was just a relationship between i'm not going to go into the names but if you to, if you watch it it was between linda and the family and she was just very self-absorbed in that episode to the point where it really triggered me the whole episode was pretty much based on how self-centered she is that was a very similar situation where this one person was so self-centered that she could not understand why that day is my special day and that kind of snowballed into my evening because it started playing into my head but the next day to be able to pinpoint that and make a mental note was very i don't want to say helpful because it's already happened but it was useful information and next time if I do watch anything that I know that it triggers me I will probably just stop watching it and finally stage five is the future and that part is focusing on how you can continue your sleep journey being aware that it might not fix everyone and this is the part that I do have to give them credit for because it's a bit silly to assume that a single book is going to fix everyone and the fact that they do address it in this book and even say that if it doesn't fix you if it doesn't help you that much for your sleep don't give up you there's other ways of doing it. there's so many different reasons why you might not be sleeping very well and I thought that was really really nice because a lot of time for people when they sell products they want to just answer all your questions say this is your answer this is it this will fix everything but it was really nice to see that they were being honest enough to say that it's not going to fix every single person don't worry if it doesn't fix you and then they also mentioned that consistency is key so all of the things in here they even have extras at the back that you can do your intensive vlogs if that's something that you do want to continue to keep that habit moving so now we're going to move into section four which i know is confusing because we just kind of finished section five but all of that was the journey which was section three now moving on to section four of this video are they impactful in the broad scope i found it very thorough i like the fact that they mentioned your sleeping environment that was something i don't think about that often they are absolutely right if your bedroom is messy if your bedroom is warm if your bedroom is dirty if your bedroom is not even dark it's not going to help you to sleep it's not going to create that peaceful environment for you to actually drift off and feel good it's not a positive feeling for you that for me was really really helpful to know because that is something that i can go and change i also like the 21 different questions that they had i think it's very easy to self-reflect and think about the different aspects of sleep and how they affect you the next day because that is something that i just would not even think about so after going through the sleep i found mine was very heavily based on my self-esteem which i'm not too surprised to be completely honest but essentially what i found was that because of the negative events which leads to negative thoughts which then leads to how i feel about myself as a human being 
which then naturally would lead into unstructured sleeps because naturally for me, if I don't feel good, I tend to run towards my comfort and that tends to be either food or my discipline goes. It is a what's the point moment for me and it's not great, but I am trying to be very transparent here, which then my unstructured sleep pattern appears mainly because I start avoiding sleep because I know the negative thoughts are going to come in and it's just a whole cycle and that's how my sleep schedule get pushed further and further and further into the mornings and finally this leads into the reviews and who they are aimed for other than the minor spelling errors I'm not sure whether it is just a different spelling in Finland or a different spelling other than in the US but in the UK uh, behavior and disrupt would look a bit funny. It is absolutely not criticizing because I am also just dyslexic, so it could just be me. But I just thought behavior was missing a U and disrupt had an extra T. But those are absolutely minor mistakes. One thing I really enjoyed was the chapter reflections. It was nice to sit down and when you finish a whole chapter to actually reflect on how that chapter makes you feel. Was there a lot of improvements? Did you think it was a waste of time? And kind of just gather your thoughts in a nice summary and you can actually physically write it down in the book as well. Another thing I absolutely love was the brain dump at the very, very end of the book. They give you extra pages for the intensive blog and the brain dump. The brain dump was really, really helpful for me because this one I didn't notice, but it's something that I have been doing since I was very young, especially when I really struggle to sleep. And I mean to the point that I physically cannot handle the emotions, the thoughts that was going through my head, all the things that makes me worried, all the things that make me angry. I write them all on a piece of paper I don't keep it in a journal because I find it very awkward when I look back and read it. So I tend to just write it on a notepad and then I tend to just throw it out the next day. But I would say that was my unknowingly coping mechanism, which it was really nice to see that is actually how you deal with your emotions, your thoughts, your negative thoughts late at night. I don't do it that often, but I have noticed when I need it i really do need it so it was really helpful to see that they did have extra evening brain dumps that you can actually write to clear your mind so that was my review on the sleep obviously in terms of who they are aimed for anyone who is losing sleep but i would have to say if you're losing sleep because of your back pain losing sleep because of other reasons other than negative thoughts i i don't no, I'll say still give it a go. It's, I'll still say it's worth a go because you just never know. But for me, because of my sleep was based on negative thoughts, negative events, it does really help me in terms of dumping all my thoughts, dumping all everything I've been thinking about during the night into a book and leaving there. Because then my brain is like, it's done. Sometimes you just need to let it all out. For example, before I got these two books, one of the ways that I tried to deal with my emotions, and I'm, I don't know if I would say proud, but I had no choice because I didn't know how else to deal with it. After the wedding, with everything that has happened, I am not just recording and I just, blurted out everything that's happened from the day that we decided to share the amazing news to everyone to the very very end every little thing that's happened and after that it was so therapeutic to me that when i wanted to record it again trying to make it in a nicer way i didn't need it at all i sat there and i was like hi this is a waste of time. I dumped everything out and it was such a good feeling for me. So I do strongly believe in dumping your thoughts onto a piece of paper, onto anything. Even video really helps. So that video, by the way, was over an hour long. <laughs> but I have to say, I am very happy with this book. Again, if you can't afford this book, I would say even if you can just dump your thoughts on a piece of paper, that is step one. That's something that would really help. But if you can afford it and you are losing sleep, I would honestly recommend just giving it a go. That's my review. Let me know what your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, consider liking and subscribing. It will help me tremendously. And I will see you next week. Bye.